ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another round of Judge Dredd 2000 AD goodness. So this time we're looking at Judge Dredd, because they hadn't already called a game that, but oh well. And we're looking at it for the Amiga. Now this was released in 1992 by Virgin Mastertronic and was developed by Random Access. This game is pretty much hated and it's apparently, well, it's been called the worst Judge Dredd game ever made. Is that actually an accurate description of the damn thing? Well, it definitely has its failings, but it does also have its plus points. Bit of a spoiler, its failings are pretty damn major compared to its plus points. The loading times are <laughs> one um, slight negative that I'm going to lamp at the game. Now, the game has copy protection. It's an Amiga game, you wouldn't really be surprised at this, but I like how it does it. It does this sort of intro screen where you need to log on. The logon code is in the manual and it's dread. I've never looked at the manual and even I could figure that bloody out. You need to do better copy protection lads. Now we're waiting to get mail telling us to go sort a crime out but we have to wait for that because as you can see we have no mail so we just need to prat around with the CD in the directory until we actually get mail through. Interesting little touch, daft way to start the game, but I fully fucking approve. Okay, right, we have our mail, so let's check it. The first mail is actually spam. Again, nice way to start the game and actually sets the tone. It's from Forever Towers. Is your stay in Mega City 1 killing you? Very nice. Okay, let's skip that. Okay, a mail from Justice Central. We need to get out there because the crime rate in Mega City 1 is going absolutely ballistic. So... The way each level works is, once the crime rate hits a certain point, it's game over. To stop the crime rate going up, you must achieve the objective for each level, and you must also kill uh, enemies. On level 1, the enemies are a group called the Fatties. In the future, Fatties are essentially bored citizens who have turned to gluttony, and uh, competitive eating is now an Olympic sport. Good on ya, future! They're not the only enemy on the first level though, there's also people in red shirts. If we shoot civilians, the crime rate goes up, so we need to be careful of that. We can toggle between joystick and keyboard, we'll be using joystick. And again, horrendous loading times. Okay, so each mission starts with the objectives, so we need to actually destroy four food dispensers. Once we destroy those four, we can exit to the next level. Now. This is fair enough, okay, but the actual main bloody failing of the game, as you're about to see, is the level layout. It's absolutely bloody atrocious. Now I'm going to do a sort of crap run, and then I'm going to do a proper run. A lot of people, when they talk about this game, haven't actually seen past level 1. I've been all the way up to probably level 4 in the past, so as you can see I'm not shooting the civilians who are going around wearing black waistcoats, but I'm shooting everyone else. And of course the crime rate will go down every time I shoot them. Now the real problem is this, as you can see, ye the ramps. You've got to sort of push up slightly when you're walking by them to actually ascend the ramp. The sort of trick I've found is if you just constantly jump as you're going towards the ramps you will go up there. The more the Judge Dread badges you pick up, the sort of, um, you will upgrade your firepower. Now that won't last for long, but it's a quite nice little touch, although most enemies on this first level die in one hit. So of course the objective here is to literally find those four food containers. The actual level wraps back around, so if you keep going right, you will eventually end up on the left side of the screen, etc, etc. So it just loops around. So we need to actually so we'll progress up from the bottom to the top. Now, all the levels I've played so far are like this. They're always find these items. And that's a big problem. The fact that the level's laid out like this. You're in Mega City 1. This could be anywhere. This could be any universe. And it's as dull as fucking dishwater. And as you can see, the uh, crime level's rising pretty... Harshly. Now there is one thing we can do, which I will do at some point. If we hit the space bar, we will actually jump onto the Lawbringer, the motorcycle. There's actually a nice little comic book transition that happens when you do that, and there's also a comic book transition that happens when you get game over. 
the problem with the Lawbringer is it doesn't go up the ramps any easier. If anything, it's probably harder to go up the ramps. You can't fire, and by all means, you're quicker, but the main problem there is the crime rate also goes up really fast as well, so it's almost pointless using it. And I don't, still have not found a food dispenser. I know where they are, or at least I thought I did. I mean, again, this is going to be our crapshoot run, and the other year, uh, we're going to do a main run once we get a game over on this. I'm, I'm not forcing a game over, but I would like to at least show it off. I'm a lot more proficient at this game than I was in, compared to the last two, and as you can see, the crime rate is flashing. Ah, food dispenser. And that's all you do. You don't press the button, you just roll over it. You may also be noting the fact there's a distinct lack of fucking music here. This is the Amiga. I think you can do better than this, lads. I know it's 1990, but... I swear Amiga games were capable of both. At least at this point, I mean, bloody hell. It just seems really dark and sterile, and there's not a lot going on. Okay, law bring up. We're about to game over anyway, but as you can see, it does tick up a hell of a lot faster when you actually use the motorcycle. Okay, the crime rate in Mega City 1 has risen far too high. Judge Shred has resigned. Will he take the long walk? If you don't know what the long walk is, it's basically where the a judge turns around and even when he's not fit for duty anymore, he has the option to go sort of take the long walk into the cursed earth. The cursed earth is this barren wasteland where mutants reign. Okay, now that I've shown off the main mechanics, we will get onto this properly. I probably still will accidentally shoot um, civilians, but oh well. So Basically, the, way, the best way to do this level is to sweep left to right. I know... well, yes, left to right. I know there's a food dispenser down here. The rest, I think, are probably on the third, fourth, and fifth levels. And then the exit is the main door right down at the bottom. Now, the crime level doesn't stop rising when you actually destroy the four dispensers. So you need to still get a move on. So here's dispenser number one, and at every opportunity, we want to take out the bad guys. And that lack of music really is still bothering me. If you actually look, the animations are actually really nice. The characters are really nicely done. And even the backgrounds, I know they're dull as dishwater, but it's still quite sort of high fidelity in the grander scheme of things. So why the hell they didn't put a bit more work into it, I really don't know. And again, the lack of music really is a problem. Actually, something else that's worth mentioning, there is actually a live system, um, like, inactive on this. Of course, on this first level, it doesn't actually matter, but when you get past it, you do get access to three lives. You can imagine that these levels take a long time to beat, and yes, in a lot of ways, they do. And especially, well, they feel like they take a bloody long time, considering all you can look at is these backgrounds. We're probably going to play up till just after what I like to call the first boss. I shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. So much so, I'm actually I'm, I'm half tempted to, at some point in the near future to actually do a full sort of let's play of this game. It's like a one-off video. Because I can actually get through it all. I've never completed it, but I've got quite near the end. I had a small obsession with this game last year, and... Ugh, the best way I can put it, if you're going to play this game and... I fully recommend you don't, but if you do choose to, put um, like a random Amiga chip to chiptune soundtrack on while you're doing it and the game is a hell of a lot more enjoyable. Right, have we only got one food dispenser so far? You can see the sort of, it's a very much a chore to try and locate the actual dispensers and I hate to say it, but most levels are like this. You've got to track an object down, you've got to disable it. But then, you know, you get the weirdness of the fact there is a boss fight. So, you know, the gameplay is slightly mixed up, but not a whole lot. At least from what I've played, anyway. This is another good reason why I may well... Once I've done this Judge Dredd series, I may actually do a... Uh, 
a one-off video of it right at the end. I wouldn't dare try and do that to bloody the other two games that we played so far, because God in hell. I mean, I should say that as well. It is a massive step up from the first Judge Dread game that was released for the Commodore 64. Now, is that number two or number three? I don't know. But it's still, um... It's still quite lacking. It doesn't feel like a game that should have been on the Amiga. I know that sounds a bit weird, but the Amiga is capable of uh, some quite impressive tech. And actually, I mean, you'll notice this as well. The game is actually, at least at this point, really easy. I'm not really getting damaged. My main sort of uh, worry is the crime level. And not actually getting hurt at all. I mean, the fatties can do some serious damage, and I don't think... I'm not going to let it happen, but if a fatty drops on me from above, there'll be, like, another sort of comic transition where it says Dread is recovering in hospital. All that does is take you out of the uh, mission for, a, like, a, a few seconds, and the crime rate goes up in your absence. Okay, that is the last one of the level, I think. Now, I've got to be careful, because I'm emulating this. Occasionally, it, uh... It can crash when you're going to level 2. I actually own a physical copy of this game as well, which is really daft considering I don't have an Amiga. It's always been on the list of things to do to, uh, to get, but I quite like how um, it's emulated, to be honest. So yeah, I have a physical copy. It's sitting in its box. I don't intend to take it out of it anytime soon. It is actually sealed. And I didn't pay a lot for it. Can you understand why? I'm, actually, I'm slightly trying to figure out what the guys in the red shirts are, unless they're basically the Futures version of Feeders. We will never know. Luckily, once I do this final um, food dispenser, I can shortcut it down by jumping off ledges, mostly. Although, you know, I've got to be careful, because that time limit's going to be a bastard. If, I, if the motorcycle worked better than it does... Um, I would just drive it to get out of the level, but it's not worth it. And I should say this as well, going down ramps is a hell of a lot easier than going up ramps. You can actually duck and fire as well, but... I haven't found, um, at least at this point, there's not much need for it on the... Oh, God, is it next level or the level after? I think on one of the levels coming up, you have to fight these gecko things, and you have to bloody duck to fight them. Okay, crime levels is flashing, so it's my best interest to execute as many bloody things as I can. The exit is there, but of course getting down to the exit's a slight problem. <laughs> Unlike the uh, first Judge Dread game, we can't just suddenly press down and fall off ledges. There'll be no nice short cutting for us. Okay, by the skin of our teeth, level over. Okay, level two. Exactly the same thing as pretty much the first level, we must turn off four valves to stop Professor Fribbs's enzyme. Just as a slight idea, I'm going to just uh, put some Amiga chiptune stuff running in the background for about, I don't know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then we'll come back. So just have a quick listen to this and see how it changes the game. Now, knowing me, I just picked something which didn't fit at all, but hopefully you can sort of see what I mean, where if this game just had some mu well-written music that fit, then it would be fantastic. Now, you can see the main problem with this area is, A, you have the, uh, the small gecko-type things, you have these blobby things, don't ask, and I just shot a civilian by mistake, but you also have the civilians that metamorphosize into the, uh, the ape-like creatures, okay? Now this level, unlike the first one, the crime rate really isn't an issue because there's absolutely tons of things on screen to kill. 
we still have unfortunately got the whole ramp thing, but otherwise it's actually really simple. The um, switches are a lot easier to find as well, they are literally straight up, but they do sort of incorporate more platforming into this section. To actually get to the first two you've got to drop down on them. The third one, I or the fourth one, actually involves you jumping between platforms straight across. And that's, you know, interesting, nice little progression. And there are sort of, the, the ideas are there for this to be a really good game, but it's missing it. I mean, it's not even like it controls bad, it controls really nicely. The sound effects are quite nice. Just the whole lack of music thing pisses me off no end. And you gotta sort of admit, the yes, okay, the level does look different than the first one, but they really could have gone a bit more all out. I mean, again, this isn't like it's bloody the uh, the NES or the Mast system. This is the Amiga. And I know I keep saying that, but this thing was capable of quite uh, major things. I'm honestly actually surprised there wasn't a DOS version of this released as well. I mean, it's not like they would have had to play, uh, pay for any licensing. Okay, so that's switch number two. As you can see, I had to drop down on that one as well. Switch three is up, and switch th four is up. Luckily, the exit to this level is right at the top as well. And then we're going to get a very nifty boss fight, which I actually <laughs> really like, because it's got another comic transition on it, and I bloody like it when they put those in. And I cocked that up massively. So anyway, let's talk about the fact that this game is one of the most hated of all the Judge Dredd games. On Lemon Amiga, it has a score of something like 2.86. Okay. I can understand that, by all means, but it's not unplayable, it's just a bit dull. Um, but again, there's no real challenge here, I guess that's another reason to sort of insult it. I mean, it's no Akira, and my fucking god, we will be doing a video on that game at some point, because that's a travesty. But overall, I I don't think it actually deserves the low score it's got. I mean, admittedly, if I'd got this for Christmas one year, I'd have been absolutely distraught. But I actually think the original Judge Dredd for the Commodore 64 was, by all means, completely worse. Now, what actually makes this a bit more confusing is the fact that this game was also programmed for the Commodore 64. Now, a copy was never released, to the best of my knowledge, but at least one was indeed programmed. We'll talk about the different versions of this game later, because there are a fair old few. Not as much as the uh, the version that was released from the Mega Drive years later. But that's uh, that's for another video completely. Okay, come on. We're almost there now. Again, I would jump on the Lawmaster to try and actually speed things up here, but it's just not worth it for the, uh, the rate the crime rate's going to grow. Okay, not that way. You're both going to change... With these sort of massive amounts of enemies lurking around each level, the crime rate really is not a worry. Yes, hello. The closer we get to the top, they actually seem to spawn a bit more as well, which just makes it even bloody easier. Okay, we're going to have to do a jump. Jump successful. I'm pretty sure we've only got one left. Yeah, is that it? Yes, that is. So you can see where the game's sort of introducing little bits of mechanics in. Even though this isn't really that good a game, I am massively interested to see where things will actually go with this, so yeah. Uh, I am promising right now that once this series is done, we will do a full playthrough of this. And I'll put bloody level check marks in, so that way we can actually see where the game goes. Because if there isn't a section on the bloody Lawmaster, like a proper section, like a racing section or a shooting section with that, I think they've really missed out on the sort of things they could do with this. Yes, I know, you want to transfer into mutants, that's lovely. And I'm really not doing very well again. You've got to go all the way to the left and then back to the right and then you can progress over the platform. Okay, crime rate's high, uh, sort of halfway up. Completely fine. I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but the fact is the mutants will actually scale up the sides of the buildings. 
I mean, the fatties at the beginning, they had three different attacks, one of which involved them throwing things, and I believe the mutants had the exact same sort of pattern. So some work was put into this, but I've got a question what the hell went wrong? Why didn't they look at this and go, uh, guys, probably could do with a bit more content. I mean, maybe if it was released a couple of years later, it would be uh, fondly remembered, but it's not. Not at all, really. I mean, so much so, not many people have heard about this, and if they have, they run screaming for their lives. Okay. Dread steps in. The first time I played this, I actually literally had to go, what the actual fuck? Now, you will get hurt here. The main thing is to jump over the uh, the balls that the good doctor is throwing at us, and to just destroy all the other jelly monsters floating in the ceiling. This is harder than it looks, believe me. <laughs> Trying to get the timings down? I think once you do get the timings down, there we go, you're fine, but... Trying to hit these guys is actually a pain in the arse. You could have done with some sort of, like, grenade attack, but then, of course, they would have made it too easy. So they've worked with the best they can. I actually, and this is the actual thing that makes me want to do a full run of this game. The boss fight intrigues me in such a way, because I didn't realise this sort of thing was even in the game. Because again, most people have only played the first section and not past that. You're busted. Okay, so that is technically, I guess, the first section done. We didn't get one for the level 1, but we did for level 2 and the boss fight. We're a credit to the city. Well done to us. Okay, so we're going to have a look at level 3, but we're probably not going to play it on this video. Okay, the Sov Agent Orlock. So as you can see, once again, we have to go around and disable things. The This level is a lot harder because there are actually enemies that will shoot us, sort of long-range enemies for once. Chase Orlock. He must be stopped at all costs. Can't remember much about Orlock. So as you can see, once again, stupid bloody ramp system and uh, enemies that look like they should be from the first Star Wars film. But anyway, let's look at the different versions of this game then, shall we? Now there was only actually one other version of this game officially released, and that was the Atari ST. Overall the game is exactly the same, apart from the sound assets are much better. Now, interestingly enough, there also was a ZX Spectrum version created. This was never actually released, but someone had recently found a copy of it, and as you can see on the screen, it's there. What's interesting about that version is you can actually switch between normal ammo and heat seeking, which you can't in the uh, main version of the game that we're looking at here. Having watched a full playthrough of the ZX Spectrum version, what I find most interesting is at the end credits, it does talk about how there was a Commodore 64 version programmed, and also an Amstrad CPC version. Alas, these never saw the light of day. As always, a big thank you goes to you for watching this video. If you missed the last episode, feel free to click on the annotation that's being shown on the screen right now, and the annotation for the next episode is there also. If you're watching this at a time the next episode hasn't been released, feel free to subscribe and it will let you know. Cheers for watching, ta-ta for now.